Paul, do, do you agree that the bow arm, our right hand, is our kind of cello mouth? I mean, that what produces sound, yeah? Now, um, there are a few things that are sort of non-negotiable or not arguable, and it's uh, the first one of them is the parts of the hands that we have. Because humans, we have the same amount of bones and joints. And between the contact point, meaning the, the finger that touches the stick, and the body, there are actually six joints for every human being. If you're from Ethiopia, from Connecticut, from Israel, it doesn't matter. So the first one is this little one, yeah? the, the first joint of the finger. Yeah? Second one is same on the finger. Third one is this knuckle, the big one. Fourth one is the wrist. Fifth one, big one, is the elbow. And six is your shoulder. Yeah, it's a big bone in a socket. Now, all those six, do you agree that they should feel or be activated or free when we play? Because if you, if, see, if I don't play cello, if I write an email and I block the first three, it's really hard to move the fingers. If I block number four and I talk on the phone, it's like really hard, you know, no, it's always free, number four. Number five, let's say I pass something to somebody on the table, dinner table. Number five would be activated. And same goes with number six. Let's say after dinner, I take my, my cup of coffee and I put it back in the, in, the, in the sink. I move it. It's, we don't even think about it, but all six of them are free and movable 24-7. When you play the cello, and you play beautifully, don't get me wrong, but all of them, if I would compare them to water dams, they're all shut off. Meaning you're using your arm beautifully, but you use it as a one piece. So you play like this <laughs> okay. and you're doing very, it's very sensitive because you're a sensitive player and person, but you are using it as one bone. You're not activating number four, number one, two, three are not, not activated at all. They're frozen. So because you're so musical, you hold the bow as one bone and you play. It's beautiful. But you're not really using the fingers, the wrist, the elbow and the shoulder. Now, what will happen if you would use it? A, you would work much less. Because to activate a note, instead of doing and moving your entire arm, you can, you can move your fingers, that's it. So I want to teach you or to shed light on it for you. You decide after whatever you want, but imagine that you're actually holding a living heart. So hold it in your right hand for a second. And let's do this imaginary game when we pump it. So we pump it in and out. You just say with me, in, out, in, out. Now, instead of in, out, say down, Down, up. Now imagine that instead of a heart, because you don't want to throw it out, it's an apple. You're holding an apple. Now just drop the apple down. Good. Now hang on an imaginary chair. Do you see same thing that happens to both of us? We're both humans. When we hang on a chair, gravity drops the palm of our hand down. And the, the wrist is a little higher. Yeah? So if we're hanging on a chair, and let's say that something is really scratchy, like you had a, a mosquito bite in your elbow. So you're scratching it on the chair. Just move your elbow. Do you see how your wrist is now reacting? It's not moving. You're not moving your wrist, but your wrist is completely free. So by moving my elbow, I'm actually able to create a reaction on my wrist. Now, if I block it or lock it, as I call it, doesn't matter what I do, it's locked. That's very similar to how you play. Your wrist is straight and it's locked. Now let's go back to dropping your wrist and let's do the pumping, but as if we're holding your ball. So pronate your hand towards the first finger a little bit. Good. Now do the same in and out. In, out, in, out. Now let's rename it down, up, down, up. 
Okay, now, take your bow, put it on the D string and hold it in the middle with your left hand. With the left hand, yes. Now, hold imaginary chair, hang on it, pronate your hand towards your, your holding position, and now just put the stick gently inside it. And we're going to eliminate six, five, and four for now. We're only going to activate one, two, three, the one, two, three uh, um, joints. So we're going to do this, we are going to activate the pumping machine, as I call it. Great! I never saw even one motion of this in your plane. I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just stating a fact, okay? You decide later if you want to activate it or not. Great, this is wonderful, beautiful. Now, just say with your pumping, say in, out, in, out, down, up, down, up. Now, imagine that you're hanging on the chair, but right here, the, ch the, the chair is very small, yeah. So we are in the frog now. We're in the frog. Now, don't drop your wrist, yeah, hang, great. Now, all we're gonna do is activate the in and out. One, two, one, three. Great. Can you pronate your hand a little bit more towards the front? Yes. Now do the same pumping. The main vein of this cello heart is your thumb. Your thumb is drawing the blood in and pushing the blood out. Yeah? Try. So I, I can't see your thumb, but I, I want to feel that this is the one that is really pushing the blood in and out. So it's always bent, but it can be hugely bent or a little bit bent, but it's never, never straight. Great. Wonderful. That's beautiful. Now, I, I know it's hard to believe, but trust me, this is how we activate the bow. It's like, I call it the cello tongue. Yeah, when we speak, the tongue is always active. Your fingers should all, always be active when you play. It's much easier, it's like solar energy, much easier to play. So now, let's get to the next stage. You've played this, yeah? Yeah. So let's do an exercise that actually sounds quite bad to begin with. Put the bow literally under the silver part. Yeah, so it's really the frog. And I want you to play this beginning of the prelude all separate bows, only using your fingers. So you're gonna use your fingers for up and down bows and to cross strings. So you're gonna do the in and out, but also the goodbye, the actually knuckle motion to cross the string. So you do in, out for down and up and goodbye for crossing strings. So when you do it at home and I'm not around, take a quarter, put it on your on your um, wrist and try to do this exercise without dropping the quarter. Not so easy. So you're basically eliminating the wrist, elbow and shoulder for now, for now. And it's gonna sound like this. It's gonna sound quite scratchy. Very slow. This is what I call the cello tongue. And everything we do today, I mean, it's just one hour, it um, takes months of work, yeah? So don't feel overwhelmed. I just want to give you an idea of how to activate parts of your body that you know that exist, but you just don't use as a cellist. What I call cello lungs, what gives air to the clarity, is your elbow, it's number five. So um, a term we use a lot in my studio is the chicken wing. You know this dance, da 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 dum da 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 dum da da dum yeah? This motion is crucial for cello, it's like an accordion. We can fill up the cello lungs and take the air out. So, if I jump ahead and I'm using my tongue for clarity, and I use my lungs for beauty, this is what happens. I get cello sound with roundness and air and, and beauty when I get clarity and I get sound. So in order to do it, try now to do first few notes and 
And then try to add what we call chicken wing motion to it. So we're still hanging, but we're do it's like a smiling face shape of the elbow. Instead of, yeah, we talked about two parts, the articulator or the cello tongue, which are the first three joints. And we talked about what I call the creator of sound, which is your elbow that gives the amount of air that you need and freedom. There's one more part. It's joint number four. No, no, before we go to six, number four. Joint number four is a reactor. It's not a creator. If you think of normal life, when you do stuff with your hands, we never move the wrist unless we want to get tendonitis or pain. We, we react with the wrist. We grab something, we write something. We don't give an order from the brain, move the wrist. We move the fingers. We move the elbow, we move the shoulder. The wrist is a connector. So in order for it to function humanly, we need to let it go. <laughs> and what you do when you play, you actually lock it. You do this, whoop, it becomes straight and locked. So even if your creator and articulator are working well, in between them, the dam of sound is locked. And that's what you have to free up. So in order to do it, hang on a chair again. Feel that all the weight is going down to the chair. Now, if you have a friend, I mean, not now next to you, but maybe later, ask somebody to gently move part uh, the elbow, yes, this joint number five. Ask somebody to actually activate it. And you can do it yourself now. Put your bow away and very gently hold joint number five and just move it up and down like you swing somebody in a swing. Now, pronate your hand towards the cello, yeah, like you're holding a bow. And just put, just move. Now, until you move it enough and you free enough joint number four, that your fingers are start moving. It's like a spiccato, look. I'm not moving my, my fingers, I'm dead. I'm not giving any order for my wrist. In order, you have to practice it because it's still <laughs> tight. Yeah, that's much better. So you have to completely let go of your wrist if you want to create that freedom in your bow arm. So now let's take all of this, and again, this takes months of work, and let's try to put it into the prelude of the second suite. Yeah, you have in, out. Just those three notes. It's actually small in, small out, and a big cello lounge. 